when the invasion initiated, you had here the eastern prong of the two external prongs headed into the Pacific Northwest region, comprising about 670,000 troops total just in this one area. But of the eastern prong, you had the main strike force as these five PLA group armies headed south down I-15 to switch off onto I-90 to go east and, uh, and two of them of the group armies to continue on south. But also you had this Trojan unit, the 75th Militia Corps, beginning in a very mountainous region as they were very light troops and acclimated to uh, mountain warfare training and fighting. They were perfect for this region. They quickly eliminated Missoula, Malmstrom, and the missile silos nearby before proceeding on to assist the 7th Group Army in occupying Helena area, as well as Malmstrom to set up a new fob on the destroyed airbase, and also continuing south, just north of the Butte area. But the area that I'm focusing on now is the border region, uh, the state line region of Idaho and Montana. And you had a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy civilian resistance as many thousands of civilians living in this region took up arms and fled to the mountains to begin the fight. The 49th Combined Arms Army, a huge Russian formation, was operating in this area, but had only left one of its brigades in the area as all the rest of the subunits, its, its division and several brigades and regiments headed north to Coeur d'Alene to fight civilians all the way up there. But leaving the one, the independent Cossack Brigade, the 205th down here, to continue the fight and mop up <clears throat> of civilians in the mountain region to assist their Chai Com brethren. Another Trojan unit, the 21st PAP Light Armor Brigade, sent two of its eight battalions north to the state line to assist their other Chai Com brethren coming now, down now from Canada. The 27th PAP Light Armor Division and the 4th. Militia Corps of the Chai Com Paramilitary Home Defense Forces, the, the National Militia. They were guarding the flanks, these mountainous roads, where they were to establish logistical supply routes going from Canada all the way to the new fobs that were rapidly being established as the nation was being rapidly conquered. By, by hour 12, the battle had just begun in, this, in the uh, state line region. 12 hours into the invasion, a massive battle began along the mountains that divided the two external invasion prongs. Two elements on the eastern prong's western end headed south to guard the flanks to secure the logistical routes for resupply in the future from Canadian CCP regime bases. 75th Militia Corps was relieved in the area. Although it was a Trojan unit, it was diverted to support other operations and establish a FOB at Malmstrom, now destroyed, and to aid the 7th Group Army by occupying the Helena area. Armed townspeople who fled to the mountains, very many, began to ambush Chinese and Russian units. Some were considerably well-armed. Many were even combat veterans, or even just veterans that had the training. Some even had Class Three licensed machine guns and Barrett 50s, among other types of weapons such as hunting and sporting rifles. The first ambush occurred upon a Russian mechanized infantry battalion from the relative safety of cliffs overlooking a valley road. What began with well-aimed pot shots turned into a brutal altercation when Russians called in air and artillery strikes from Russian MiG-29Ks operating in the area and their own brigade's artillery battalion of 152mm howitzers. Russians quickly got in contact with their Chai Com allies across the, mountain, the, the mountainous state line in Montana. The 27th PAP Light Armored Division had a bloodlust that they couldn't quench. They'd already raised several American towns to the ground. And they'd, 
and would play an integral role in the unfolding battle. The 4th Militia Corps was adequately equipped for mountain warfare. Even the 21st PAP Light Armor Brigade sent two battalions in, down in the southwest there. Now, some of the first moves in the battle, as I said, were the ambush on the Russians, but the Russians quickly countered by sending their tank battalion, their armored battalion, just up into the foothills, as far as they could go up a road that, uh, that turned into a dirt road going higher up in the mountains to residential areas. And they fanned out and formed a base of the perimeter at the base of the foothills. And also, at the same time, you had the 4th Militia Corps sending elements to assault enemy forces that tried to recapture Missoula by sending five battalions total to attack. Two infantry battalions to the northeast of Missoula, and three into the town proper and to its northwest before they headed down high up into the mountains, where they eventually even egressed from their vehicles and formed a perimeter on foot, and now had a fairly large amount of American armed civs in a pocket, in a cauldron of death, the tanks on one side firing up the mountain, and the Chai Com infantry troops on the other side blocking the escape. And you had Russian artillery relentlessly shelling the mountainside, raking up and down, hitting mountain homes, and destroying everything in its wake. And about at this time, you also had a huge amount of Chai Com forces. Anti-tank battalions, two air defense artillery battalions, whose 57 millimeter guns could also be fired from 90 degree angles and act as gigantic exploding tipped humongous machine guns auto cannons and they and their other infantry battalions now headed down i-15 and then went up into the mountainous foothills and drove up the middle of two american elements and encircled them and destroyed them both before heading on to other areas such as driving a wedge up of these formations as the PAP, the 27th PAP, sent a, a large formation of four light tank battalions and a mechanized infantry battalion and even its headquarters battalion to assault the base of these mountains, these foothills right here. And you had SU-24s, or I'm sorry, SU-34s providing relentless heavy ground attack air cover for these formations, for these chi formations. The PAP's uh, divisions, one artillery battalion, also of one of one five two millimeter PL sixty six howitzers, began to shell American pockets everywhere. Also, these PAP battalions, these two light tank and this one mech infantry, surrounded a few civilian pockets of two hundred men here and one hundred men here, destroying them right outside of the town of Wisdom, before forming a perimeter to block in a much larger formation up in the mountains. I will continue this battle in another video as these battalions make it to the battle from the 21st PAP Light Armor Brigade. This large battle was only now just beginning to unfold. Many, many people would perish. Many Americans, very few invaders. But it was a large battle nonetheless that spanned many, many, many miles, many dozens of miles. The scope and scale, this is one of the largest engagements with civilians in a countryside in the entire invasion up to this point in the war. Twelve hours in, and it would last 36 hours.